fretting corrosion can be prevented with a specialist dielectric connector lubricant, and we'll help you understand how. Firstly, we define electrical connector fretting wear as wear that is caused by small, repetitive, almost micro-motion movements in an apparently stationary connector that is subject to external mechanical excitation. An example would be a nearby combustion engine, a rotating fan, or any other vibrating equipment. Fretting wear is often microscopic and therefore not obvious to the naked eye. Repeated thermocycling is another type of wear that is often not considered, but can be a contributory factor associated with contact wear and fretting, but obviously the frequencies involved are nowhere near as high. Fretting corrosion is defined as the combination of fretting wear and corrosion, mainly due to oxidation. Fretting wear and oxidation can affect most metal types, but tin-plated electrical contacts are particularly susceptible to fretting problems. Tin is quite soft and a thin oxide layer can be quickly formed on the contact surface. When the oxide layer is broken, the fragments can be pushed or pressed into the tin as the contact or terminal moves or experiences fretting. And the downward spiral of wear begins. The fragments will accumulate and cause an increase in electrical resistance, sometimes with minimal change in appearance to the contact surface or at least to the naked eye. The fretting corrosion effect can be subtle or quite pronounced. There is no hard and fast rule. Here is a graphic that illustrates fretting wear and the start of the corrosion process on an unlubricated or dry contact. On the graphic, you can see we're talking about movements of 0.1 of a millimeter or below. The debris that builds up is most likely very small, almost like dust. Once the fretting and oxidation process takes hold, the condition of the contact surface will deteriorate. How fast the deterioration will be? Well, there's too many variables involved, so there's no hard and fast rule and no way to make a general prediction. It can be weeks, months, or even longer. In the automotive industry, we've seen fretting take hold after 40,000 miles, or maybe over a year in duration, but we've also seen connectors fail in a matter of weeks. Fretting is not a problem exclusive to the automotive industry, just that this is where we see the major amount of fretting problems occur. Before I talk about the lubrication solution for this fretting problem, it's worth mentioning that an oxidation, fretting, or corrosion problem in a connector can result in a huge bill for equipment manufacturers. When fretting happens in the field or while the device is in service, eventually there will be open circuit resistance and a circuit will fail. Temporarily clearing the fault can be relatively easy. Sometimes just unmating a connector and remating it is enough to move the microscopic debris so a contact is made again. This is not a problem if the issue is isolated to one individual device. But if you have thousands or millions of units in service and the same circuit problem occurs en masse, then the warranty or recall costs could be massive. An example that may help the viewer relate to a potential problem is when you pick up an old torch after not using it for a few months. At first, the torch doesn't work when you switch it on. But after banging the torch on a hard surface or with your hand, the torch suddenly works. This is not normally due to a fretting issue, but an oxidation issue. While left unused, an oxide layer will have built up between the battery and the torch contacts. Banging or knocking the torch moves the batteries just enough to break or scratch the oxide layer away, and hey presto, the torch works. The same thing can quite often happen with remote controls, especially if you try and watch a TV in a spare room that you haven't used for some time. The fault clearance solution for a fretting corrosion problem is also quite simple. Ever had an engine management warning light appear on your car? It's quite common that when you take the vehicle into the garage, they'll plug in their diagnostic equipment and it will register a circuit fault. The technician may start searching for a faulty connection, 
but find there is no visible problem. Connectors may be unmated and remated during this visual inspection. The unmating and remating process actually clears the fault by moving often microscopic debris out of the way between the contacts and hey presto, the fault is cleared. Much of the time, local garage technicians will not understand how or why they've cleared the fault, putting it down to electrical gremlins. An application, a specialist dielectric connector grease, will prevent fretting corrosion and oxidation problems. So how does it work? This graphic illustrates the grease lubricating any movement or fretting in the connector and therefore preventing fretting wear. The presence of the grease also seals and protects the contact surface area, shielding it from oxygen or any other contaminants and so oxidation cannot take place. You may be thinking that surely the introduction of a grease between the contact surfaces will cause circuitry problems. Not so, I will explain. Take a moment to study the graphic shown. A correctly formulated dielectric connector grease will not insulate and nor will it conduct. Think of the two contact surfaces like two jagged mountain ranges coming together. The current flows where the various mountain peaks of the two contact surfaces touch. These mountain peaks are referred to as asperities or sometimes A spots for short. When the mountain ranges or contact surfaces come together, there are a lot of microscopic gaps or valleys, if you want to continue the mountain range theme. Think microscopically, not what you see to the naked eye. So the grease sits in the valleys or gaps between the mountain peaks, environmentally sealing the area from oxygen, contaminants and even moisture. But the grease is not in the way of the mountain peaks and so the current flows as normal. There is no increased resistance across the contacts or connector. Back to the last graphic with the contact lubricated. Hopefully it will now make more sense. In circuitry terms you can think of the dielectric connector grease as an invisible barrier protecting your contacts or connectors. In the context of grease dielectric means not thermally or electrically conductive. In reality there is a ceiling to this dielectric characteristics. Most of our lubricants being dielectric to a ceiling of around 10 kilovolts. So it is unlikely that you'll have any applications where our products are not suitable. All our synthetic dielectric connector lubricants are very durable. They don't evaporate, dry up or waste away. Unless the relevant connector is repeatedly unmated and remated, no reapplication of grease is required and the lubricant will match or extend the functional life of your connector or contact. So hopefully you now have an understanding that the relatively small cost of applying a dielectric connector grease is a great return on investment and a way to improve your device reliability and extend the functional life of your connectors. Please take a look at our related articles and videos on our support website.